With blockchain being such a transformative technology, I think our focus really is, is bringing um, new opportunities to consumers around the world. Um, we do this with MoneyGram Access. It's a global on-off ramp services. But uh, the, the overall greater macro point to this is that we give people a pathway um, into crypto and it's, this enhances access um, to this new economy, which is important. Um, for people and, and their their livelihood. Specifically, I think that we want to continue to innovate MoneyGram access. And one of the ways that we can do that is to add additional payment methods. So we will build on top of our cash offering to offer new rails for uh, bank accounts, cards, or, or mobile money. Um, but on the on the wallet side, you know, with a view towards our, our partners, uh, we're going to roll out a, an API solution that allows them to design the front end, design the UX um, in a way that better suits their needs and allows them to meet their consumers um, in, a, in a much better way uh, as they're the ones that uh, have the relationship with these consumers. And so I think those two things are uh, what we're focused on um, as far as innovation goes um, in the near term. MoneyGram is one of the largest consumer money transfer businesses, and they help people send remittances to friends and family around the world. I've been following MoneyGram's entry to crypto since their partnership with the Stellar Development Foundation was announced in 2022. For the season three premiere, I interviewed Miguel Garza, strategic partnership manager at MoneyGram. Miguel is on MoneyGram's crypto team who manages the company's MoneyGram Access product, a global on and off ramp service used by crypto wallets and exchanges to help their users convert USDC to fiat and vice versa at MoneyGram locations around the world. Outside of advanced economies, many emerging markets still lack regulatory frameworks for crypto. Generally, when there is a lack of regulation, access to the traditional financial system, including on and off ramps to move money in and out of fiat to crypto, is often unavailable to crypto service providers. And when this is the case, the utility and use cases for crypto is diminished, especially for people who may want to store their wealth in crypto and convert it to local currency when needed. Last spring, I had the privilege to interview Mark Hainan from Stellar, where we also talked about MoneyGram Access and what this partnership is trying to achieve. You can go to our YouTube page to watch this interview. Miguel agreed to be our season three premiere guest, where we talked about what MoneyGram is doing for blockchain, their partnership with Stellar, and more. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. And now, on to the show. Well, although MoneyGram probably doesn't need any introduction, for the uninitiated, what is MoneyGram? So MoneyGram is an 80-year-old company uh, that has expertise in cross-border money movement. Um, most people know us for our brick-and-mortar uh, location and, and physical footprint. We've also got very expensive digital offerings. Um, and what are MoneyGram's core consumer and business products and services? So traditionally, it's been remittance peer to peer. So I have a friend or family member that I'd like to send money to uh, back home, um, and they use this these funds for basic needs, you know, food, shelter, um, uh, you know, paying their bills, and so that's what MoneyGram is most well known for. But we also have uh, other services that we offer to businesses. Um, we have a, a a growing business to consumer uh, payouts. Um, business and, and vertical. And so uh, we're doing some things with, with uh, different NGOs. And Miguel, you're part of MoneyGram's fintech strategy and innovation team. What does this part of MoneyGram do? What are you and your team working on? And where does blockchain and crypto come in? So formally, my focus in, in Charter is to reinforce and develop uh, partnerships that will allow us to execute on our digital strategy. Um, now we choke in, informally, my job is to disrupt from within. And so it's how do we then take these insights um, and conversations that we're having with these partnerships and use them to, to better enhance uh, our current offer. And Miguel, when did your journey begin into crypto? I really like this question, John. I, I speak with a lot of uh, founders of wallets. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, in the startup space um, that are building on blockchains like Stellar. And it's fascinating to kind of hear everyone's uh, intro or the light bulb moment that they had in crypto. 
Um, unfortunately, mine is not nearly as interesting, so I'll just keep it really short. Um, although I had heard about digital assets and uh, crypto uh, sometime around 2013 and 2014, um, I didn't actually uh, act on it until 2017 when I opened up uh, an account with a large centralized exchange. And that was kind of the journey of my uh, with, with crypto for me. Awesome. Well, it's great to learn a little bit more about you, Miguel. And let's jump right into talking about MoneyGram and blockchain. As you mentioned, MoneyGram, with its over 80-year history, has been a global leader in money transfer services, a sector now on the cusp of transformation with blockchain technology. Remittance payments, a cornerstone of MoneyGram's consumer offerings, are also one of the primary use cases that blockchain and digital assets can facilitate peer-to-peer. -peer. Reflecting on MoneyGram's long history, Miguel, how has the company's approach to fintech and blockchain-based services evolved? And what are the priorities and objectives shaping MoneyGram's blockchain and fintech strategy today? With blockchain being such a transformative technology, I think our focus really is, is bringing um, new opportunities to consumers around the world. Um, we do this with MoneyGram Access. It's a global on-off ramp services, but uh, the, the overall greater macro point to this is that we give people a pathway um, into crypto and it's, this enhances access um, to this new economy, which is important. Um, for people and, and their their livelihood. And I'd like to come back to MoneyGram Access in a little bit, but first, Miguel, what is the company's vision when it comes to the application of blockchain in financial services? And what specific innovations does MoneyGram envision blockchain technology facilitating in the near future in financial services? Specifically, I think that we want to continue to innovate MoneyGram access. And one of the ways that we can do that is to add additional payment methods. So we will build on top of our cash offering to offer new rails for uh, bank accounts, cards, or, or mobile money. Um, but on the, on the wallet side, you know, with a view towards our, our partners, uh, we're going to roll out a, an API solution that allows them to design the front end, design the UX um, in a way that better suits their needs and allows them to meet their consumers um, in, a, in a much better way uh, as they're the ones that uh, have the relationship with these consumers. And so I think those two things are uh, what we're focused on um, as far as innovation goes um, in the near term. As blockchain technology continues to mature, what are some of the long-term transformations MoneyGram anticipates in the money transfer sector? So I think more and more people will use crypto or digital assets um, for P2P payment flows. Um, and so building our understanding around that, I think is helpful for informing our, our overall product strategy. And so I think there's gonna be users that always want to you know, transact in a, in a fiat world, but for those that are early adopters or maybe for those that are the children of people who, um, you know, always want to stay in that fiat world, maybe, maybe these, this next generation of people um, in, in their interest with using blockchain technology, we want to meet those, those users where they're at and we want to give them um, a pathway and establish a relationship. And so I think that's that's very promising and um, something that we, we are constantly thinking about. Earlier this year, Emerging Voices had the privilege to have on our show Mark Hainan, Partnership Manager at the Stellar Development Foundation, the entity that supports the development of the Stellar blockchain, where we discussed their multi-year partnership with MoneyGram. This collaboration represents a fascinating convergence of traditional remittance services and innovative blockchain technology. Miguel, when did MoneyGram first begin to collaborate with Stellar and how did the partnership get started? So just a little bit of background. I've been with MoneyGram uh, a little over two years. Um, and so I came in right at the point where uh, maybe just a few months before we launched the initial kind of pilot. Uh, even before we went to commercial release in June of 2022, I think this was around November of uh, of 21. Um, but I think the the origin of the relationship was just 
started out, um, you know, in some exploratory um, discussions. And very quickly, I think the conversation pivoted from, you know, how can blockchain help MoneyGram to how can MoneyGram help a blockchain? And we realized that we were uniquely positioned with our physical network and our um, expertise in cash to create that bridge for people to onboard into crypto. Um, and so that, I think, was a natural um, uh, alignment or uh, something that was very interesting to both sides. And we we pursued it from there. What are some of the goals and objectives for the partnership? And what is MoneyGram and Stellar ultimately trying to achieve? Both organizations see the value in giving people access um, to financial products and services. Um, MoneyGram historically has served, uh, you know, a segment of users who perhaps are not digitally digitally native or um, so, some are underbanked. Um, but the goal would be to basically facilitate that fiat to crypto interoperability. So MoneyGram is is an anchor on Stellar's network, um, and that's that's really the goal is to give people a pathway to move into digital assets, specifically USDC. Um, so that they can now make that, uh, you know, a bigger part of their financial lives. Stellar is known to have a focus on enabling low-cost, fast retail cross-border payments. Miguel, how has the collaboration with Stellar influenced MoneyGram's approach to international money transfers, particularly in emerging markets? And how has this partnership impacted MoneyGram's strategy for doing business in emerging markets? You know, it's been a, a mutually beneficial partnership. I think remittances uh, definitely have a role to play in the overall P2P uh, crypto payment flows. And so it's important for us to to learn in and, and dig more about that. Um, but I would say at this point, I think the users of MoneyGram Access and traditional uh, money transfer users, whether they be a MoneyGram consumer or a you know a consumer um, from one of our competitors. I think those over those those user bases don't really overlap at this point. Um, but I think we realize that there's value in um, understanding what's driving adoption. Um, and so, looking towards the future, um, I think that you know as we grow and build MoneyGram access, we can take those learnings to to you know enhance our services, whether they be fiat-based remittance services, uh, or perhaps something that is more tied to crypto. Since the inception of this partnership with Stellar, what have been the most important milestones and successes you've achieved? So it's it's great because we meet, uh, you know, every quarter for a quarterly business review. And that's that's one of my favorite parts is to kind of recap the, the wins, whether they be uh, big or small. You know, there's the performance metrics. So uh, I remember, you know, when we passed 10 million um, in volume um, that, you know, that was processed or, or more than 10,000 transactions. And obviously now that the service has been in market for more than a year, those milestones were uh, long, long, long ago, right? So those, those are not recent milestones by any means. But um, just to, to take it to a more macro point, I think uh, the award that we received at Paris Blockchain Week um, its recognition is is uh, is tremendous because it really um, validates you know the work that both sides have done um, in bringing um, a real practical and innovative use case to crypto. Uh, and I think that anything that um, paints crypto positively, you know, in in the limelight in the limelight um, is 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 excellent for those um, for everyone that's that's working and building in crypto. And what was the award that MoneyGram won at Paris Blockchain Week? So this was uh, recognition for our partnership with UNHCR, Circle, and Stellar to revolutionize the way that aid is delivered. So this is basically using the power of the blockchain uh, to send funds uh, to internally displaced people, refugees, um, and they can receive these funds into a digital wallet and then cash out at the MoneyGram network. So it's really a flavor of, of off-ramping, but a uh, very targeted and specific use case. And this pilot was for refugees in Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken. 
That's right. That's right. It, it was for, um, you know, that, um, that set of refugees, but, you know, really it's applicable to, to any um, kind of use case where you've got, you know, people that need funds, they're, you know, under um, unfortunate circumstances and being able to receive those funds in near real time. Uh, and then being able to take those funds from digital to fiat by visiting something that's in their immediate proximity. Um, it's just something that's really incredible and um, unique. Well, congratulations to you and, and MoneyGram again for that really awesome pilot with the UNHCR and Stellar. Now let's spend a few minutes understanding what MoneyGram Access is and how it's enabling digital asset wallet providers and exchanges give its users the ability to cash in and cash out from fiat to USDC circles, US dollar denominated stablecoin via the Stellar blockchain. You mentioned MoneyGram Access a few times, although I just gave a very brief high level introduction to MoneyGram Access. Miguel, what is MoneyGram Access and how does it work for digital asset wallet providers <clears throat> and retail users? MoneyGram Access is a service that wallets, um, and these can be custodial wallets or non-custodial wallets, um, integrate into to give their users the ability to go into USDC using fiat. And so uh, wallets integrate into MoneyGram Access that what that means is that when the user goes into their wallet app, they see MoneyGram as a method uh, for, for on-ramping or off-ramping. Um, and so they're able to select that and then uh, go through uh, a flow. Um, and at the end of the flow, they're ready to visit a MoneyGram location to either deposit or drop off fiat and see their USDC balance update in real time. Or if they've um, liquidated that balance, they can go and collect the funds in fiat uh, at a MoneyGram location. And I think it's really powerful because we have capabilities in some countries to offer multiple currencies. And so, for example, in Poland, we support USD, Schlotty, and Euro. And so you've effectively got, you know, a US dollar balance that you can take into any um, foreign fiat currency very easily. And who are the wallet providers that are using MoneyGram Access today? Yeah, so I'll, I'll call out a couple, um, but you know we we appreciate all the partners that have um, that have integrated with us and have and uh, you know see the value in this. But uh, I'd say Lobster, Vibrant, and Decaf are, are some of the the most well known uh, wallets. We've also got uh, a partnership with Whitebit, which is a large um, Ukrainian exchange uh, that recently um, kicked off, I think, uh, a few months back or maybe last month. So um, those are just a few of the partners and. You know, of course, um, the pipeline is growing. Um, I'm really excited about Q1 and Q2 of next year. I think we'll have some very um, exciting partners to add to the list. Um, fortunately, I can't, I can't, you know, say too much now at this point. But uh, I am very, very eager to, uh, um, you know, have a conversation like this perhaps uh, sometime next, uh, next, uh, next year. And Miguel, can you walk us through the user journey from cash to crypto when a user wants to convert cash to USDC or USDC to cash from one of the wallets using MoneyGram Access? Yeah, so it's pretty simple. So the user would log into their wallet app. They would, um, you know, the the pre-flow uh, navigation, the navigation is going to vary from wallet to wallet, right? So different wallets may list their on off ramps um, in different places within the app. But basically the, the, the basic um, work workflow is that the user goes into the app, looks at a menu, sees the options for buying and selling USDC. They'll see MoneyGram as an option. Once they select that MoneyGram flow, they're brought into um, a series of screens that are embedded. It's an iframe within the partner wallet app. They enter their details, uh, they enter the amount, um, and then at the end of the flow, they're able to go and visit the physical location um, that is a MoneyGram location to complete the transaction. Okay, so when a, a customer is off-ramping, for example, do they have to have received USDC from someone who used MoneyGram to send them the funds? Or can anyone that receives USDC on Stellar's rails and just needs an off-ramp 
use MoneyGram's off-ramp to convert USDC to fiat? Yeah, really important question. So MoneyGram actually isn't playing a part in the remittance flow. That transfer of USDC is happening on the blockchain, and that's separate from the MoneyGram piece. The MoneyGram piece really is is just in this example the you know the off ramping. So once I've received USDC, maybe John, you sent me you know fifty USDC. I see it land in my um, wallet. Uh, I now have a balance of USDC. It's at this point that I can then go look at the options that are available in the wallet and select MoneyGram, and then I am uh, receiving funds, you know, from myself at that point, right? Because I'm taking the USDC that sits in Miguel's wallet, and then now going to a MoneyGram location to see that converted into cash. Very, very cool. You know, I'm, you know, with all this this cross border movement potential, or rather off off ramping and on ramping around the world you know i i'm wondering about you know how does moneygram manage its liquidity i mean i imagine it's incredibly sophisticated given it's this you know perhaps one of the biggest money transfer brands in the world and and now we're we're bringing in on and off ramping for usdc how does moneygram provide liquidity for cashing in and out of USDC? Very, very smart question. So just a data point to throw at you. Um, I think as recently as last year, we settled something like $172 billion worth of um, transactions. And so MoneyGram is very capable um, as, you know, as, as it's well known in, in um, how we, how we manage, um, uh, you know, this, this funds movement. Um, but I, you know, it just, we have expertise, right? We have the right people, the right teams um, that um, are very active in um, foreign exchange markets and um, the operations um, and, you know, um, stay close to our, our banking partners and banking relationships. And so all of that really helps us manage liquidity and um, run our business um, in a way that, um, you know, allows us to maintain our, our presence and uh, continue to be a, a leading brand. What about when someone cashes out? Like if I'm based in Cambodia or if I'm based in Brazil or Nigeria, wherever, after a, a customer cashes out, like what happens to the USDC? Like, is it part of MoneyGram's strategy to custody the USDC or, 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 or what happens to it? No, no, MoneyGram doesn't uh, custody custody the USDC, right? So um, all of the um, on-chain movement exists with the crypto partners. Um, and so when when somebody liquidates a balance out of their USDC, right, their, their balance goes to zero and they've got fiat at that point, right? And so whatever they choose to do with that fiat is, is up to them. It could be something that they use to go and buy groceries with, right? It could be used uh, for, for something else. Um, maybe going to dinner, but um, as far as the the role that MoneyGram plays, um, it's really again just limited to the on and off ramping, which is basically the the either collection of the fiat for the purposes of buying USDC or the payout of the fiat whenever a user determines that they want to sell their USDC. You now, something I've been wondering about is regulatory management with all these countries that MoneyGram has a presence in. And I, I think you said this earlier, but just to recap it, it, just in case, MoneyGram provides both on and off ramps in 39 countries and is enabling off ramps in an additional 143 countries. Miguel, how does MoneyGram manage regulatory compliance as it pertains to crypto across all these markets? That's definitely an important piece of uh, being an on and off ramp um, service. And so kudos to our compliance and legal teams. We've got a best in class program um, and, you know, we have regional uh, teams as well as a more centralized, um, you know, legal and HQ, but they work hand in hand and they're great partners to the business. Um, I think that really, you know, they're, what they do is they stay up to date with the regulations. Um, 
and regularly monitor, uh, you know, what's going on in the space to make sure that uh, if there's anything that we need to get out ahead in front of, um, that, that we're doing that. And so I would say just having a focus um, and leaning into our uh, compliance and legal experts, um, this is how we manage that. And um, we do it really well. Where are people using MoneyGram to cash in and cash out of crypto the most? You're in all these countries. Where, where do you see the most activi activity? And globally, roughly what kind of volumes is MoneyGram converting from crypto to fiat and vice versa? You said a moment ago, last year, there was $172 billion in transactions. I'm going to presume that's, that's in total. And, and perhaps a subset of that is crypto, or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, that actually doesn't even include the crypto number. So that's <laughs> that's just purely, uh, you know, from the from the core or the traditional business. But interesting question. So as far as traction goes, I want to highlight two countries. Um, and I think maybe Mark, when he was on the podcast, um, spent some time talking about the insights. Um, that he gathered in, or that we gathered from these two countries, but I think it's worth worth highlighting again. So um, Argentina and Colombia have uh, really been, um, you know, sort of the, the leaders that we've seen uh, where this is, I think, taking off. And so I think part of that is because in Colombia, you've got this uh, segment of digital nomads. So these are people that are maybe freelancers, you know, creatives, uh, you know, they built, um, you know, projects in Adobe or similar type software, or maybe they're like coders and developers that are building on blockchain or just other uh, software. And these people have an appetite for uh, receiving payment in crypto. And so I think once companies realize that they can basically reach this talent and that this talent um, likes to have, uh, you know, a payout um, in a digital asset like USDC, um, and is willing to to accept that, um, then that you know that potentially is is a benefit to those employers because they can now reach that set of of employees um, and reach that workforce. But um, so Colombia, I think, uh, has seen really great adoption with cash out because of that community of digital nomads that are there. Um, I think there's also uh, migration trends um, that factor into this. So there's a lot of migration from Venezuela into Colombia. And so um, people that come into Colombia, you know, to, to live and work um, also want to send money back home to their friends and family. But uh, because of the, the currency situation in Venezuela, they want to send something that is going to give their loved ones the ability to preserve their buying power. And I think that's a key value prop um, with stablecoin is that you've got something that's going to hold its value over the long term. And so... Um, I think that's also a driver for why we're seeing so much adoption in Colombia. In Argentina, um, very similar. Uh, there's there's a currency situation there that is a macro thing um, that is really um, being something that is driving people towards crypto adoption. And so um, with with inflation there so high, I think people are 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 desperate to find something that um, helps them maintain their standard of living, um, and so taking their local salary um, and then being able to seamlessly and very easily convert it into a digital currency that they can take with them anywhere, that they can con convert back into local fiat currency whenever they need to pay their bills, is a very powerful thing, and I think they've realized it. And for that reason, we're seeing great adoption. In terms of scale, um, you know, it's growing month over month. Um, I think we're in the very early stages of this. The the service is only, you know, a year and four or five months old. Um, and so I'm I'm really um, bullish on its future. And I'm, I'm really excited to look back at, on it maybe three years from now and kind of see the, the upward trend. But at this point, we are seeing an upward trend in, in adoption and just overall um, transaction volume. And as we continue to bring on more partners and uh, wallets, um, you know, that will only uh, continue to, to grow. That's really interesting. Okay, so you said Argentina and Colombia are two markets that MoneyGram in particular has observed this service really taking off. And, and what I heard in the case of Colombia, you have digital nomads, they wanna get paid in crypto, but they also, they need a means to cash out 
in local currency. And then in Argentina, some people may want to also get paid in crypto, or they're looking as uh, at least USDC uh, and other stable coins as a, a store of value. Miguel, is there anywhere MoneyGram is observing that crypto, in addition to these two use cases, also being used as a medium of exchange peer-to-peer -to, -peer to pay for stuff instead of cash? The blockchain will will tell you kind of where the where the the peer to peer activity um, is happening, right? And so you'll see the wallet addresses moving funds to and from each other. Um, I would say, and this is just my my view, um, that I think this is going to take off mostly in emerging markets um, because people uh, like to have control over um, you know the the transaction. There's no intermediary that they have to rely on. Um, to make sure that the funds actually get settled into the wallet other than, you know, the blockchain that they're um, transacting on. And so, you know, I would say Argentina, Colombia, um, if it's a, a, if it's less of a inflation use case and more of like a remittance use case, like I mentioned with, you know, Venezuela into Colombia and then those Venezuelans sending money back into Colombia, I think, um, you know, you'll see, Traditionally, what are the big money transfer corridors? Uh, I, I think you'll start to see some some share of the P2P flow shift towards digital P2P or crypto P2P as opposed to the cash P2P. A lot of MoneyGram's traditional business is centered around making payments and receiving payments to emerging markets. What is MoneyGram's view on crypto adoption and use in emerging markets and and what is the strategy on crypto engagement in emerging markets so i would say i think we are really uh, focused on listening to our partners these these wallets that have integrated the moneygram access service into their app because they have a really great understanding of the local market they really understand their users. And so they are going to be the best ones that can um, identify, you know, the drivers and um, tactics uh, that are going to be most uh, efficient for crypto adoption. Um, and we really lean into that. Right now, MoneyGram has only integrated its USDC cash in and out services with the Stellar blockchain. Miguel, what are the plans to expand and integrate other blockchains with native USDC? And are there any plans to offer cash in and out services for other digital assets like Bitcoin or Ether? You know, there's so much value that's in Web3 um, that's in the digital asset space. And with MoneyGram Access being that bridge and facilitating that interoperability between crypto and cash, there's a lot that we could do there um you think about all the the value that's created um you know with DeFi products and services and you know P there's a lot of you know monetary value that's tied to that right and so if we can extract all of that value back into the fiat world that's a huge deal um so i think it's something that we are think you know considering long term for now, we're really focused on on what's in front of us um, with with Stellar and uh, MoneyGram Access, um, but we have an eye on the future, of course. Miguel, is it a strategic priority then for MoneyGram to onboard more users globally to access crypto and and store their wealth in crypto? I don't think it's a strategic priority to drive MoneyGram users to use crypto. I think the strategic focus is about enabling a pathway into crypto for everyone around the world, right? Not necessarily moving MoneyGram customers um, to become power um, digital asset or crypto users. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think that that it's not just about um, MoneyGram users, really. This is just about serving and meeting uh, consumers worldwide uh, that have an appetite for this type of product and service. 
Well, as we wrap up our conversation, let's now look to the future and discuss how MoneyGram plans to continue leading in product innovation and, and what we can look forward to. Miguel, how does MoneyGram stay at the forefront of innovation in the rapidly evolving fintech and crypto space? And what strategies or frameworks does MoneyGram implement to maintain an edge on innovation and, and embrace emerging technologies? I think it starts with our, our partnerships. Uh, going out, finding the right type of partners, partnering with purpose, understanding each other's capabilities and understanding what problems um, we are each uh, able to solve. And so the feedback, the guidance um, is, is very important from our partnerships. We also have internal teams that prepare um, industry updates and um, do briefings on uh, you know, the industry and, and competitors. Um, and then, you know, our product team is also uh, very savvy. Um, they're continuing to um, talk to users, interview um, consumers um, about our product services and offerings and incorporate the feedback. And so I think all of those things combined help us um, position our offerings for the future and um, continue to evolve them. How else is MoneyGram implementing and integrating blockchain into other parts of its business operations? In the future, there will be an opportunity to unlock operational efficiency with the way that um, corporate funds are settled um, to and from our agent network. Um, there are certain um, you know, bank accounts overseas where there's pre-funding um, that is required to, to, run, to run the business. And so the, the real-time settlement properties of the blockchain potentially can, can unlock um, capital there that can then be redeployed or invested into the business elsewhere. So that would be something that um, you know, we could look at in the future um, and is, is a way that blockchain could um, support uh, MoneyGram um, from a sort of business and operational approach, maybe less focused on the consumer uh, offering and more an internal um, value add. So last year, it was MoneyGram Access, the largest on and off ramp network. Miguel, what other upcoming projects, services, or partnerships are you particularly excited about that we can look forward to that aim to further integrate blockchain within MoneyGram's offerings? So there are three things that I would like to call um, attention to. So the first one is the uh, continued uh, development on MoneyGram Access. So right now it's cash and that was our big differentiator because we are the only company that can do cash on and off ramping at scale. But we also are going to add additional methods on top of that. So I mentioned earlier that you know MoneyGram is transforming its business and we've got um, some underutilized digital capabilities that we can um, use for our, for our own benefit. So with MoneyGram Access, we're not only gonna offer the cash option, but we will layer in uh, digital methods. So to bank account, to debit card, to mobile money wallets, right? And then that makes the statement that MoneyGram is the largest on and off ramp, you know, far none um, and even stronger, um, it, it, that makes it a stronger offering because we've got these additional methods in addition to the ge geographical reach that we're providing. The second thing is the, integrated end-to-end -end solution for our aid clients. So I mentioned potentially the piece with, with hosting, with the physical network. And so I think those things um, give us more than enough to, to focus our time and attention on, um, you know, in, in the coming year and uh, probably the year after that. That is awesome. What a, what a really interesting kind of product and services roadmap and, and as well as investment in this emerging technology, especially for an 80 year old financial services company to be so focused on, on furthering the research development and deployment of financial services using blockchain. I mean, that, that's quite a statement in the arc, a rather short arc of uh, blockchain and digital assets in, in the, you know, the most mainstream sense. Now looking beyond blockchain, Miguel, what other technological frontiers is MoneyGram exploring to potentially disrupt the money transfer and payment industry? 
We have a, a business uh, disbursements uh, line. Uh, we've got a uh, digital agent line of business as well. And um, there are great teams and leaders um, from that part of the business as well um, that will, um, you know, drive uh, innovation. Um, and so I, my, my purview is really uh, the crypto related um, activities and um, the tie into remittances with crypto and, um, the inflation use cases. And so that's, that's what I'm most educated on, but, uh, I'm sure there are other parts within our, uh, within our business that those leaders could speak to. And I'd, I'd be happy to, um, provide an intro to them and, and maybe, uh, give them the opportunity to, to join this, uh, wonderful podcast. And this actually segues nicely to wrap up our conversation, to listen to you about your thoughts and visions for the future of blockchain and crypto. Miguel, closing thoughts and looking ahead. How do you see the intersection of traditional financial services, blockchain technology, and digital assets evolving in the next 5, 10, and 20 years? And what transformative changes do you anticipate? So I think I think that both systems will coexist. I don't think that, you know, blockchain, crypto, Web3 is going to displace or upend the traditional financial system as it exists today. Uh, I think they both will coexist and it's about building the pieces that can connect the two. And so that's a major theme that is is a guiding principle. Um, but I, I, I do just on the consumer level, I do think that with access to technology, with everybody on the internet um, and with AI, uh, I don't see how more and more people don't make digital assets a part of their personal financial strategy. You asked me how I got into the, how I got into the industry. Um, and, you know, I mentioned, I just opened up a, a, an account on a large centralized exchange, but you know, the, the rationale in my mind was pretty simple was a, you know, from a personal portfolio allocation perspective, this is a new asset class and Bitcoin and Ethereum offer two different things. One of them arguably is a store of value and, and the other one um, offers a lot of utility and the ability to build um, really interesting apps and financial services products. And so on those, with those two things understood, I think that it's really easy to take a long-term approach um, to making these um, assets something that is part of your financial, personal financial strategy, um, or at least it was, it was for me. Miguel, thank you very much for being a guest on the show and sharing your insights and perspectives. And to stay up to date on how MoneyGram helps connect people through their global money transfer network, as well as all that they're doing with blockchain and digital currencies, you may go to moneygram.com. That does it for today's episode of Emerging Voices and EmergingCrypto.io podcast. I'm John Lira. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you.